Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the sophomore album from Natalie Prass called The Future and the Past. So I remember a couple of years back, I described a certain brand of indie pop and folk that I tended not to like, that I and other critics have branded as twee. And in retrospect, I think my opinions might have evolved a little on this subject. Because give the aesthetic style even a little bit more thought, and you would think that parts of it would be right up my alley. Earnestness, a songwriterly attention to detail, organic texture that rewards patience and nuance in the listener. Sure, maybe a little bit of immature whimsy, but that can work in the right context. You think that some of this could resonate and in truth, that's probably true for me. So maybe twee is the wrong designation for this music, but I also can't deny there's a certain delicate, overly arranged, and yet very accessible, borderline basic aesthetic that does not resonate nearly as strongly if that core strength does not come through. And for a prime example of that, let's talk about Natalie Prass, an indie pop singer-songwriter most recognizable for her thin, fluttery vocal delivery and very polished and clean, borderline baroque pop arrangements that won her buckets of critical acclaim for her self-titled debut in 2015. And yeah, I can see the quality. She's a wry and mostly clever songwriter. The arrangements are certainly lush and very pretty with their strings and horns. And there's a theatricality to her presentation that I can usually appreciate, but it's never gripped me more deeply, an album that I can appreciate a lot more than I actually enjoy. And thus, I was very wary when I saw her follow-up show up on my schedule, but I was certainly intrigued by some of the buzz. Reportedly, that core strength that finally materialized, along with her taking a more stridently political direction after having to junk an entire album of songs she felt just did not fit with the current climate. And while this album hasn't quite been getting the same rave reviews as her debut, I thought there was a chance that this album could click for me more than her last one, so alright, how is the future and the past? So okay, here's the thing. I will definitely say this project is better than her debut, at least for me. The compositions are more diverse, there's more of a thrumming groove and foundation, which for some with Natalie Prass's vocal register, that's only a good thing. And you can tell that she is delivering a more impassioned, strident performance. She really cares about what she's singing about, showing signs of a stronger singer outside of the borderline baby voice cooing that I've never really liked. And yet... Uh, I'm sorry folks, I still feel kind of distant from this sort of singer-songwriter material. Not that it's bad, I can certainly appreciate the quality and I've got enough to talk about for a full review, but as a whole I'm just kind of underwhelmed. The sort of resistance record that might have its meditative place for its audience, but little the urgency or deeper core of power, which does become an issue when you're making this sort of political music right now. You know what, in fact, let's start off with my three P's for political art that I've referenced before. Power, populism, precision. Because you know what, Natalie Prass definitely did nail the populism. The language is broad enough to encompass everybody in that liberal feminist role. It's certainly approachable, it's very accessible, and with the updated choices in the production, it doesn't feel nearly as borderline detached as her debut could. All of this is a good step. But when it comes to power, you can tell that Natalie Prass's approach is aiming for the subtle long term, the drawn out conflict over years that it can feel like that this political conversation has become. And as such, this album needs to double down on conserving strength and keeping that foundational core of higher ideals together... Well, at least in part. See, that's the first surprising thing with this album. While the political pieces are getting the most attention by the music press, obviously, they are really kind of scattered moments across this album that already feels weirdly sequenced and meandering. Sure, Oh My sets the stage, it's one of the better songs here, but it's two pretty straightforward love songs in an interlude before we get Hot for the Mountain, which is this odd, off-kilter little song with this watery strings embellishments, marching beat, and where you can tell that the hook is supposed to project strength against the darker tensions, and it can but feel way too placid and reserved to really get there, but too uncomfortable to really inspire and galvanize people. And that weird framing juxtaposition also plays into Loss, where Prass has described as her Me Too song in capturing the complicated feeling involving going back to an abuser, but the actual composition itself feels way too light and borderline romantic to really capture a greater gravitas or tension. I'm not denying her experience, but this is no Tillett 
what happens to you or praying. Now thankfully it's followed by Sisters. One of the points where the thicker multi-tracking, the sharper groove, and the gleaming piano foundation actually projects that chorus strength that Natalie Prass is looking for. And then we're back to jaunty adult alternative coffee shop music like Never Too Late and all that momentum completely gone. And while she tries to recapture some of that darkness on Ship Go Down, a song openly contemplating those outside of her bubble that did vote the other way and how she could possibly stand against them, the meandering Brazilian jazz inspirations for the song don't really help it. No matter how much flattened electric guitar and a tighter bass groove that doesn't really go anywhere that she rams into the midsection. And by that point, while you do get some genuinely pretty songs like Far From You, the album is just kind of spent and that deeper core feel compromised. Yes, Ain't Nobody tries to revive the groove with some mid-2000s funk touches, but it, I'm sorry, it just does not get all the way there. And when you start looking for more precision, I can kind of tell you why it doesn't work. And you would think this would be a place where Natalie Prass could connect more strongly as a singer-songwriter. Let's get real. As much as she tries to belt on Loss or with songs like Sisters and The Fire, she can nestle into a groove, she can hold her own there, but let's get real, she's not a powerhouse singer. And you can tell that she's much more comfortable in her softer cooing register, which does not project strength, sure, but it should be more comfortable delving into the more intimate details or some more elaborate imagery, cut more than just wallop. And we get a bit of it, hot on the mountain and far from you, they get in the right ballpark with some of the poetry, even though I'd argue that neither song cuts to the depth they really could. Far from you is about how Karen Carpenter died from anorexia in the early 80s, and I doubt you could have pinpointed that from the content itself, but once you know the context, the song does make sense. It's pretty touching, pretty beautiful. But the larger problem is that Prass's writing more often goes for broad strokes and language, which Yes, it's populous, it could resonate, but it kind of runs at odds with her softer delivery and a lot of her production, which is doubling down on these tight 80s inspired grooves that are definitely welcome in her sound, but don't exactly complement her writing style. Especially on songs like Ship Go Down where she ditches the cadence altogether to do more of a jazz thing and it just doesn't work. And this is coming from somebody who really likes that wiry Prince-esque funk of Oh My, or the sinuous bass groove on short court style, or the piano back thrum or the fire, or the roiling jazz R&B impact of Sisters, but as much as I like these, Natalie Prass and her production team can't help but push in all these glittery string sections and soft rock touches that both lack urgency and organic texture. But then again, when she tried adding a real edge to the noisy guitars on Ship Go Down, it didn't work at all, so I'm not sure if there's an easy solution for the ideas that she's trying to present that this could have even worked. I'm just not sure how it could have come together. And look, I definitely respect what Natalie Prass tried to do with the future in the past. I certainly consider it more ambitious than her self-titled release, and I can see there being a real audience for this who might shy away from the music with a more of a pronounced edge in their political subject matter. But this is her second album in a row that just didn't really resonate with me. The writing's good, but not great. It's overly broad, and her delivery and production was aiming for something a lot tighter, and weird album sequencing utterly cripples any sense of momentum and makes the project feel a lot longer than it is, which is not not really good sign when there isn't a lot of energy. For me, it's a solid 6 out of 10. It's recommended if you're a fan, but not beyond that. It's a very mild brand of protest, a coffee shop brand of protest, and if that's all you're looking for, if that's all you really need right now, that's certainly okay, but for me, I just need a bit more punch. That's it. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'd like to like and subscribe and be more ungrateful. Trust me, folks, I know what audience this is going for you. I'm not trying to disparage your protest. If it works for you and you have that opportunity, good. I'm happy about that because it does have its weight. It does have its place. But for me, it just didn't click. I'm sorry. If you want to buy the record, link's down there below. Polls there for y'all to tell me how wrong I am. I would be happy to hear it. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in my scheduling process so I could have covered this earlier or help support this channel, link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. More details right there. If you want to see my schedule, it's on my Instagram, link down there below. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.